Hey, what is up guys? It's Toy Adventures here. And today we have a really unique video for you guys. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at our entire Mattel Jurassic World collection by species and categories. Now this is a massive undertaking. We have hundreds of dinosaurs here to look at. And we may have missed one or two, I will admit that. It's not a perfect, you know, complete 100% thorough, but it's everything we had in our bins ready to go. And uh, it's pretty much like 95%. Basically, I'm just gonna go through each and every collection and let you guys know everything I know about each one. Now, I may have forgotten the specific line or subdivision each dinosaur came from. And hell, some of the names might even be lost on me, but hey, I'm gonna try my best and look up the ones I uh, falter on, or at least try to, because again, some of these dinosaurs in this toy line are really obscure. But anyway, let's get started with the full collection breakdown, starting us off with the Velociraptors, and boy, is this a massive collection to start off with. All right, starting us off, the Raptor collection is probably the biggest. First here, we have one of the Legacy Collection Brown Raptors from Jurassic Park, followed up by another Legacy Collection. This is actually from the original uh, multi-pack release, that blue Raptor there. Then, of course, we have the newest Delta, I believe. Uh, that is a Camp Cretaceous Attack Pack. Uh, it was, I don't know the subdivision name for that one, but it is a Camp Cretaceous Raptor. That green one right there is the one that came with the Dominion Ian Malcolm, followed up by the original stalking green Raptor from uh, Fallen Kingdom. Then, of course, we have the, I believe, Camp Cretaceous Charlie, followed up by the first release of Charlie we got. Um, right next to that one, that is one of the jumping Raptors. I'm not sure on which specific one it is. We also have blue right up there. And this is another one of the early attack pack raptors. I believe it's the one in the legacy collection, but I could be wrong. And those next three raptors right there are, of course, the brown raptors from the original legacy sets. I believe it's the kitchen set. And that standing up one right there is from the newest Ellie uh, Chase Escape kind of set. Then you have uh, the two Hammond collection raptors we've gotten so far, that being the original Jurassic Park and Jurassic Park 3 male. Right next to that is going to be our customs. Now, we mainly stuck to the battle damage mold for our customs. So we have a, quite a few Jurassic Park 3, uh, you know, Lost World and stuff. Then we have our three blues right there, uh, being battle damage and the two attack packs. Then we have the raptor that came with Sammy from Camp Cretaceous, the Destructosaur blue and yellow Velociraptor. Uh, I'm not too sure on that orange one. I know that is the Legacy Collection Tiger Raptor right there, the jumping one followed by another jumping Velociraptor. I believe that is also Legacy Collection. Um, not that yellow one. I believe that one is from Dino Rivals. And that Raptor right there, the yellow one right next to the jumping Raptor with the red face is the uh, Destructosaur, not Destructosaur, uh, Extreme Damage Velociraptor, followed by Delta and Echo. Yeah, who's a real mouthful trying to get through all these guys. There is a ton of Velociraptors in this line. I don't think this is all of them. And this is about 95, 99% of our Raptors we have in our collection. And luckily the next collections aren't gonna be as crazy. So we have assorted carnivores here, starting off with two Crylophosauruses. We got the Yang Tronosaurus, two Kakara Dontosauruses, and ending off with the Eocacaria. So this is just kind of a random assortment of carnivores. I didn't really have anywhere else to put these guys. So I just thought I would start off with these guys. So. These are the random ones, starting off with the Crylophosaurus. I believe those are both Dino Rivals. The Yang Chua is, of course, with Dominion. We have another Dino Rivals, Carcarodontosaurus. Or no, that's Dual Attack. And I believe that blue Carcarodontosaurus is from the Camp Cretaceous line. I could be wrong on that, but I do believe it is uh, from the later line of than the original Carcarodontosaurus. Again, this guy right here is from the Camp Cretaceous. Uh, you know, Rorivore's Wave. And the original Crylophosaurus right here is actually from Primal Attack. Yeah, who remembers that way back in the day? But yeah, original one was from uh, Primal Attack with the yellow and the brown coloring. The blue and orange coloring is from the uh, Camp Cretaceous line. So pretty cool underrated dinosaurs we got right here. Up next here, we got the Yang Chuanosaurus from the new Jurassic World Dominion toy line. This is a kind of a puppeteering gimmick kind of toy, and I always love when Mattel does these gimmicks on the dinosaurs because it just makes it easy for me to film. And this guy is no exception. 
He's a really obscure dinosaur, and I have no idea who he was before this toy line. So, um, you know, that's another thing I love about this toy line. It will introduce you, as a dinosaur fan, into dinosaurs you never actually heard of. So, really cool dinosaur right there. Definitely love it because of that puppeteering gimmick. And, uh, yeah, just look at the sculpting on him. He is really crazy. I love the sculpting on this figure. They really went all out. They didn't need to, but they did. Next, we got the Kakaradontosaurus. Kind of an underwhelming figure size-wise for the kind of species it is, but the toy itself is still really cool. This one right here is the Dino Escape version. So this is the kind that came with capture gear that this guy was made to break out of. He has a button on the back that makes his head, you know, pop down, his mouth open, and it escapes from his capture gear. Really cool toy. Always a plus to get capture gear with it. Obviously, I don't have it here because it's not really relevant to the dinosaur, but still great. Next up, funny enough, is, again, Dino Escape, Picard onto Source. They had two Kakaras in the same toy line, which is pretty interesting. And uh, this one is a really nice repaint. I love the blue and vibrant colors on this guy. Really makes him stand out from the rest. And honestly, it is my favorite of the two. Uh, we do have a custom Kakaradontosaurus, though it's not here right now. Uh, it is based off of the Jurassic Park Operation Genesis look. But that is really the only one we're missing right here. I'm not too sure why it's not here, but, you know. Uh, next up, we have the Eocacaria. This is another obscure dinosaur, a cool one that looks like it belongs in the snow with all those feathers on it. This is from the Dominion line. And uh, while it is a nice look, I am a little underwhelmed by the sculpt here. It's not Mattel's best work. It kind of just all mushes together and just looks like this big lumpy dinosaur shape. Uh, I feel like it is, you know, mainly due to the simple paint scheme, but also it is due to the sculpt just a bit. It is kind of simplified, giving it a just a kind of a, a strange look toy wise but this has been the first wave of you know just kind of assorted carnivores you know there's so many of these guys so many different species such a variety to really look at that you gotta just make you know random assorted you know kind of categories and that's what this next one is as well we have the rajasaurus from dominion pretty interesting dinosaur Again, another kind of obscure one that I haven't really heard of too much, but it is sculpted amazingly. And here is that custom Kakaradontosaurus. I guess we finally found it and managed to get it into the shot. So here it is, again, based off of the Jurassic Park Operation Genesis look that is really the original appearance of Kakaradontosaurus in the Jurassic Park, uh, you know, kind of mythos and franchise. So I really have a strong connection to it, and I had to get this custom done again. It's not quite the size I would want for a Kakaradontosaurus, but the fact that it's here makes me happy nonetheless, and I still love it. I can't help it. But this is, again, just kind of assorted carnivores. And just for note, the artist that did this is Prep Prop on Instagram. Again, that is Prep Prop on Instagram. He is the artist that handled that. Very talented. So here we have the Scorpio Venator and Dryptosaurus, both Roarivores in the Dominion line. Um, the Scorpio Venator looks a little silly with its paint job and its really intense sculpt, but I can't help but love its boxy head. The Dryptosaurus is dripping. Next up, we have the Aquatics. This is a great collection. This is all of our kind of amphibious slash aquatic dinosaurs, starting off with our two Sarcosuchuses here. Uh, this is, I believe, Either the Primal Attack or Dual Attack um, Sarcosuchus, along with our custom painted Sarcosuchus right here. Uh, it's not really based off of anything, just kind of a realistic looking crocodile. I really liked it. Again, this is done by Prep Prop on Instagram. I have a, quite a few works done by him. He's a really favorite artist of mine to get custom dinosaurs from. So these are the two Sarcosuchuses. There is one more, but again, like I said, uh, we, we have trouble finding everything for the collection showcase, but there is that dark gray and purple Sarcosuchus we do have that for some reason is just not present in this collection. Hopefully we'll see him later down the line. Next, we have the Battle Damage Plesiosaur and the Savage Strike Plesiosaur. These are our two Plesiosauruses. Uh, they're both really nice. Of course, I like the Battle Damage one more just for its blue, more aquatic looking color scheme. Uh, the Savage Strike isn't too bad, but of course, you gotta go with the classic. I remember way back in the day, 
That blue one was such a pain to track down. But thanks to some international friends, we managed to get it. But this, uh, this Savage Strike one was no, uh, you know, real chore to find. It was kind of easy. Next, we have the giant, of course, Mosasaurus with the Chronosaurus and the Lyoprarodon right next to it. Starting off with the, starting off with the Lyoprarodon. This is one of our more recent releases along with the Chronosaurus. This is a beautiful rendition of the Lyoprarodon and is much more accurate to size than, of course, the more famous Walking with Dinosaurs version. But I still love this thing, even though it's not the hulking monster from that, it is the real version, and you can't argue with that now, can you? Next up, we have the rubber slash real feel giant Mosasaurus. This originally came out in the Fallen Kingdom line, although it was released many times under many different boxes and different, you know, sublines. So this is pretty much this the iconic Mosasaurus. I believe there's been one retool of it, but we didn't really need to get that. We have Chronosaurus. Now this one has the real Lyoprarodon kind of color scheme from Walking with Dinosaurs. That's what I said back in the review. I absolutely love the colors on this guy. Love the sculpting. They really went knocked it out of the park with this, uh, you know, particular one. The colors, the sculpting, and the action gimmick is all really great. Take the batteries out, and this makes a wonderful pool toy. I always love these water dinosaurs just because of that. They have such a unique environment. It's always such unique designs that it's always like a just treat to get one out of this toy line. Now up here in the front, we have the brand new Nosasaurus. Now do not ask me what toy line it's from. I can't remember even though it just happened. But just know that this is our one and only Nosasaurus. I'm really only going to bring up the subdivisions when there's multiple of a species. Otherwise, it's just kind of like our definitive version of that dinosaur. There's no real need to be like, oh, primal attack, la da 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 da. You know what I mean? So that is our Nosasaurus. Just came out this year, and another great addition to our aquatic collection. Up next, we have the Flyers. And just gonna say right off the bat, I do not know most of these collections. Again, I'm not a big fan of Mattel Flyers, and to be fair, I'm not a big fan of the Flyers in general, so I'm going to go ahead and just say that these are the basic Roarvore gliders. We have the brown and green one. This one looks to be the Primal Attack uh, Pteranodon, followed up by a more orange Pteranodon. Again, I don't know what subline this is from. I tried looking through and I couldn't quite find anything that matched through my reviews. It's kind of what I'm using as a reference here. And, uh, but I do know this one. This is our original uh, Dominion. I believe, no, Fallen Kingdom. This is our original Fallen Kingdom Pteranodon. Uh, not very impressive. Uh, but this one certainly is. This is the Amber Collection Pteranodon. And it actually makes a perfect uh, Hammond Collection scale Pteranodon. Especially if you're going off of Jurassic Park 3 and not Jurassic World. Really love this one. It's kind of the benchmark of their flyers, although I'm not super sold on the bendy wire arms. Next, we got the Tapajara. And again, since this is the only Tapajara, its subline and whatnot is kind of irrelevant because this is just our Tapajara. Uh, kind of a small little guy, but beautiful. Then we have the massive Quetzalcoatlus. That one is something impressive. This one is from, of course, Dominion, being the star in that movie. Uh, I don't believe it's actually our first Quetzalcoatlus, but I didn't buy the original because, again, I'm not a big fan of Mattel's flyers. They usually don't do too good of a job on these guys that really need a unique type of toy to really function well because they're flying and they're also walking, and these toys usually only capture one, that being flying. But... Here we have the Carnotauruses. Now, if word of fair warning, it's not gonna have the newest, um, the epic attack one. We filmed this before we actually got that guy. So unfortunately he can't show up here, but we still have a great selection to take a look at. And of course, our collection starts at Fallen Kingdom with our original Carnotaurus figure. You see the original there and our repaint by, uh, Bishop Toy Works. Here we have the little baby that came in the new Dominion set. It's supposed to be a sub-adult, but they made it so small, it might as well just be a baby Carnotaurus. This is the one that was chasing Owen and Malta. 
Um, so, pretty cool little guy. Next, this is the custom to make it look like the Lost World interpretation of Carnotaurus from the novels. Again, this is done by Bishop Toyworks. He is a crazy talented artist and has made most of our customs, including most of our most famous customs. So, this is definitely a great addition to the collection. I actually didn't even commission this. He just had it ready to buy, and I was like, you know what? That looks amazing. I'll go ahead and take it. Let me get that. So, here we have a beautiful green jungle Carnotaurus. And, of course, we can't forget about the original release from uh, Fallen Kingdom, the original Carnotaurus. This thing was a banger back then, and it's a banger now. Sculpt-wise, I still think this is the most impressive-looking Carnotaurus. It's not the best overall now. I think that is the epic attack. But this was a absolute banger for a first attempt at a Carnotaurus. And they could have just never made another Carnotaurus again. And still, this would have been totally acceptable even up until now. Although, I am very happy they did continue. And we have another Bishop Toyworks custom here. This being the Fallen Kingdom movie accurate Carnotaurus. Again, another one I'm super happy to have. The sculpt here with the custom paint makes this thing look beautiful absolutely perfect that's what i love about mattel's figures is that yeah the paint's not always a hundred percent but if you can get that paint on there the sculpts are a hundred percent and you'll just end up with something that looks almost like a movie maquette now onto this big guy right here this is the primal attack carnotaurus and this is mainly what they've used for their carnotaurus toys uh, from here on out they use the Toro, which we don't have because, I don't know, it's just a specific Carnotaurus. Wasn't really too interested. But they have the Toro and the Epic Attack, which I was mentioning earlier, is, of course, based off of this. Although it is a retool, meaning it's not the same. It has some differences, key differences, but it is based off of it. And we cannot forget Demon. Yes, this is our repaint Demon. Uh, it is, again, the Primal Attack. And fun fact, you guys may have not have known this in the movies. Demon, I believe, has two right or two left arms. I don't know which one it is out of the top of my head, but he has two of the same arms. Kind of hard to notice on film, so you may have not known until now, but yeah, that is a factory error with the toy. Again, that one is done by Prep Prop. You can kind of tell between Prep Props and uh, Bishop Toyworks Customs, but that is the Carnotaurus Collection. A very nice one. Uh, for a dinosaur that hasn't really been too well represented in the Jurassic franchise, Mattel really did not let this dinosaur go to waste, and I hope they keep making more Carnotauruses. Here's hoping for a Hammond collection real soon. We all know it's going to happen eventually, but that day just can't come soon enough, and I'm hoping it is soon. So, next up we got the Para. And a fun fact, Parasaurolophus is my favorite herbivore dinosaur. We're going to start off with the Dual Attack Parasaurolophus from the original Dual Attack line. It has a moving tail and a bobbing head. This figure, while it looks great, confused a lot of people because it uses the Lost World color scheme while using the JurassicWorld.com uh, uh, proportions and anatomy for its body. Uh, I like the mix of it. While it is a little strange for a Lost World fan to see the Jurassic World anatomy on the Parasaurolophus, I can't complain because it is good anatomy and a beautiful sculpt. So I'm still really happy with it and definitely a dinosaur worth buying two, three, maybe four of. And that leads us on to the next pair we got in the toy line, that being the very colorful and flashy Camp Cretaceous, um, I don't know what you'd call it, like special showroom Parasaurolophus. They were in that underwater kind of tunnel area where they saw these guys and they have the uh, bioluminescence uh, in their bodies, the vibrant purple glowing feature. Next up, we have the absolutely perfect Hammond Collection Parasaurolophus. Now, people had issues with the kind of chubby face. I don't have an issue at all with it. I think this guy is absolutely fantastic. And to get a, you know, a poseable, movie accurate, very nicely painted, lost world Parasaurolophus, that sends me right over the moon. Again, if you guys don't know, The Lost World is my favorite of the Jurassic Park movies. Uh, favorite of Jurassic content ever, really. I absolutely adore The Lost World, and so getting this Parasaurolophus was just a special treat to me. 
I'm waiting till these guys go on a good sale on Amazon so I can really stock up on them. Next, we have the little, uh, the two babies. That is the one from Dominion, and that is the little junior from the Lost World, uh, you know, Roland Tembo and Dino Tracker set. So both really cool molds to have. I would have rather gotten the Dominion Paris Office is a full-sized para because I absolutely love that color scheme, but I guess a baby will do for now. And finally, we have a custom. This guy is based off of the Parasaurolophus from Jurassic Park 3, and I can't exactly remember the exact artist who made this. I'm not gonna guess because I don't want to say the wrong artist and give credit where credit is, you know, not due and, you know, take credit from another artist. So I'm just gonna say it is a custom. I am not particularly sure on the artist for this one, but it is not my work, obviously, and it is still beautiful. All right, next up we have the Baryonyxes. And the Baryonyx really hasn't changed too much. While it has changed colors, sculpt-wise, we've only gotten three Baryonyxes. It's kind of the same story with Carnos. We have Grim, and then I believe that's a Primal Attack Baryonyx, followed up by uh, Limbo or a Grim. I don't know. They're Camp Cretaceous names. Um, that is another, I believe, Camp Cretaceous of the you know Baryonyx pack. I don't know their names. Not really important. Not a fan of Camp Cretaceous. Then we have the Hammond Collection, Baryonyx. Obviously, this is gonna be the best one because it's all posable. And then we have the uh, motorcycle kind of dual pack with Owen Grady. That one doesn't really have any gimmicks. Kind of a bare bones Baryonyx. So pretty interesting collection we've got going here. Going again from here. I believe this one is Limbo. I know it's one of the Camp Cretaceous three uh, Baryonyxes. And uh, this one right here is not from Camp Cretaceous. It's just another repaint, although a really beautiful one with two tones of really nice green. I always love green dinosaurs. I'm not too hot on a green Baryonyx just because of its environment, but this one still looks great. I love the shading on it. It looks fantastic. Then we have our actual new mold of Baryonyx here with Grim. I'm pretty sure this one's Grim. He actually has two tones of green on his back. Nice beige color for the rest of the body. This one I love. And then we have just kind of another basic Baryonyx. I'm not too sure which one this one's from. It is a unique mold, seeing as it has the closed mouth instead of the regular open mouth. So that one is very nice. I love the colors on it. Marching up next, we got the Hammond Collection. Now this is obviously based off of the Fallen Kingdom Baryonyx, and it looks fantastic. Although mine has an issue with its arm constantly falling out. That's definitely annoying. Hopefully your guys don't have that problem. Um, the proportions on it are great, although it can look wonky in some poses. You gotta make sure it looks good. And of course we have that rather dud at the end, the red Baryonyx. But this is the Baryonyx collection. So far, all of them have been really nice. They have had, had trouble standing here and there. Not all of them are made equally, but I definitely think that Grim right there and the Hammond collection are the standouts from this line. Now, obviously, there is the original uh, Fallen Kingdom version. We couldn't find it. That one's super old. I have it in box, but, it, you know, it's all the way up in my room. I didn't want to drag it all the way down because it's, you know, uh, hooked up on the wall. And uh, it's kind of would be awkward to put a box dinosaur here with all these loose ones. So, uh, but you guys all know what that one is. It is the original, um, the original release from Fallen Kingdom. And this Hammond collection is really the evolution of that. So uh, I do apologize for that one not being present. But again, you just couldn't seem to find it. When you have hundreds of dinosaurs and bins in the garage like us, just hundreds of dinosaurs all over the place, it's kind of hard to keep track of all of them. And stomping on in, we have assorted ceratopsids. So as the title suggests, this is just a random assortment of the ceratopsids from the line. Obviously right here we have our two styracosauruses. I'm not too sure about the individual collections on these. I'm gonna guess Primal Attack or I, mean, I think it is Primal Attack for the main line. A lot of these early ones are Primal Attack. We have the Proto Ceratops right here. Kind of strange with its color and the color of its eye. You really can't see the eye too well. That's just another one of their early attempts at dinosaurs. They didn't quite have the paint schemes down. Next up here we have, I believe, the, we have the Zuni Ceratops. Really interesting one. A brand new one from the Dominion line. 
And uh, just another cool set of tops to add to the line. Mattel loves just doing these obscure kind of one-off dinosaurs. So that is our Zuni Ceratops. Nice one to add to the collection. Taking a look back here, we have the more interesting ones, followed up by the Diablo Ceratops from our new Dino Trackers line. This one's really cool. I love the red fade to, uh, to tan. It kind of reminds me of the Disney Dinosaur Carnotaurus color scheme. Interesting that they implemented it on a Ceratopsid, but I love to see that color scheme regardless. I just love everything about this guy. He looks great. His colors are awesome. He's just a cool one that I can't wait to use more in movies. Following right up right next to him, we have the original attempt at releasing a Sinoceratops, although, uh, spoiler alert, it's not a Sinoceratops. That is a Pachyrinosaurus. Yes, for those of you that remember, back when the Fallen Kingdom line originally came out, we were supposed to get a Sinoceratops with this exact color scheme, but they switched up, switched up the uh, the species and we accidentally got a Pachyrinosaurus instead of what was supposed to be a Sinoceratops. So we have a Pachyrinosaurus with Sinoceratops color scheme. Still looks great. It's nice to have, a, you know, just an extra, you know, Ceratops in the line. So I still really like it. Although it does kind of look funny next to the new Sinoceratops that actually has that color scheme. Here we have the infamous, not Pseudoceratops. Uh, for those of you that don't remember, we didn't get any like announcement or warning for this guy. He just showed up at at Walmart's one day, and we were all blown away. Same with the uh, the Allosaurus for big for the battle at Big Rock. This guy was just a really nice surprise, and that's what I'm always gonna remember him as. And this right here is the Sinoceratops I was talking about. This is the newer release, actually. They did do a first release Sinoceratops that you can see right next to him, the gray one. But this is the correct Fallen Kingdom orientation with the green and the orange on the frill. This guy is great. Finally, they fixed it. I'm not too sure what subline this is from, but it doesn't really matter because this is just supposed to be the Dominion Sino, followed up by the original Sino we got here. This one is nice. You can still see elements of the original design with the colors swapped, obviously, but you can still see the overall color placement, color design. Uh, you can still see the similarities between the two. They just kind of swapped the color palette. And that's fine by me because that kind of fits, you know, animals in general, but they have similar designs, just kind of swapped colors for swapped environments. So these two make a great pair. You can kind of pretend male and female. I'm just happy Mattel said, you know what? Let's fix that. And they went and fixed that. And next up, we have the Pentaceratops Dual Attack. This one is amazing. I absolutely love this one. Everything from the rubber head, the improved size, and just the really nice action gimmick. This is a solid Ceratopsin toy through and through. I absolutely love this one. And I hope they do more like it. Of course, we're getting that Habitat Defender Triceratops. It's supposed to be absolutely huge and so obviously mattel is now saying you know what we're not going to be doing these tiny little undersized ceratopsis anymore we hear you guys we're gonna you know fix the error of our ways so that has been the evolution of mattel's just kind of basic ceratopsids not quite triceratopsis but right there in the family with it these guys are great and i love each and every one of them there's always just something nice about a herbivore that can defend itself and mattel certainly knows that triceratops is not the only horn face out there that deserves love and that leads us right on into triceratopses mm, this has kind of been a kind of a lackluster collection for this toy line i don't think i need to tell you guys that mattel hasn't done too great of a job on these guys because they've all been small and meek we're gonna start off with here up front we have the gray dual attack triceratops now, some people say this one's based off of the canceled Lost World Triceratops toy. I'm not so inclined to believe that. Yes, they're both gray, but that's just kind of a super vague, you know, idea to have. But dual attacks are always great. Then we have this super lackluster original Dominion release. The colors are nice, I can't lie, but that's all that's nice on this one. Uh, well, the sculpt is nice, too. The sculpt is nice. It's really just the size on these guys. They're criminally undersized. And that does not change even with our next one. I believe this is the Primal Attack Triceratops. There's been so many. We haven't bought them all because, again, there hasn't been really any change between them. 
So this is again just the same kind of toy you've gotten before, just with either less or more gimmicks. I think in this case, less than the dual attack. Really right now the dual attack has been so far the best value just because it has more gimmicks built into it, but none of them are truly that great. Then we have the best of them all, objectively, the Hammond Collection. Now, sadly, even the Hammond Collection, what is supposed to be the definitive version of this species, is lackluster. No opening mouth, again, criminally undersized, but if you can really look past those, this one is still a nice articulated dinosaur toy, and is going to serve as a nice little juvenile for the Habitat Defender when it finally drops. But in terms of now, it is still a subpar Triceratops, and for the Hammond Collection, I just can't excuse that. It is a subpar toy. And here we have a green Triceratops. I am not too sure. I want to say this one is again dual attack, just because it has the moving tail back there. I'm going to assume it's dual attack or one of the kind of little offsets of dual attack. This one has great color schemes. I absolutely love the green on this one. It just looks like a jungle triceratops. And of course, anything jungle and dinosaurs, I'm all over. So this is probably my favorite paint-wise of the triceratopses. I absolutely love that one paint-wise. Again, these are kind of letdowns, especially for such a regal and beautiful and majestic species as triceratops. Such an iconic species. Uh, they really should have done a lot better. And uh, that's just kind of why these guys are bittersweet. They look great. They're just not the size they need to be. They are a bit underwhelming. What's never underwhelming? Spinosaurids. We all love them. We all love these crocodile mouths. And Mattel knows that. And so they have dug into the bag past just Spinosaurus and have reached to grab some more, even more interesting, obscure Spinosaurids from the list. Now, up front right here in the beginning, we have the brand new Dominion Cymosaurus. I believe that's how you say the name, Cymosaurus, Cymiosaurus. Uh, a really interesting uh, quadruped, actually. For those of you that don't know, the Spinosaurus in reality was a quadruped as well. So it's really nice to see that aspect of reality represented here. Then we have the original release of the Sucumimus with the blue and gold. This one was really tough to get, I remember. Then we had the much easier to obtain dual attacks uh, Sukumimus. This one was actually released in retail, unlike just being on Amazon. And the colors are not really the best. Kind of a mustard brown mix going on there. Not a fan. Colors are not the strong suit, but it does have great gimmick seeing as it is dual attack. So uh, definitely better toy gimmicky wise, but uh, that paint, I hate it. But. And, and do not be fooled by those painted claws. I actually did that third party. That was me. Then we have the... We have the Irritator from the Cab Cretaceous line. We're actually getting a brand new one from the Hammond Collection line. Again, kind of interesting to see Hammond Collection go for uh, these non-movie obscure dinosaurs. But this original release, I think, actually has the cooler paint scheme. Now, here we have the Dominion uh, Ichthyo Venator. This one's really neat. His paint scheme is kind of super toyish and reminds me of something Imaginex might do. So I'm not too hyped on the super neon green and kind of just boring bluish green main color scheme on this guy. Sculpt is amazing again and almost kind of animated looking. But that is really it for the main Spinosaurids other than of course Baryonyx, but they were in a category of their own. Next up, we got the Stiggies. And I'm not too knowledgeable on the individual lines these guys came from because we did get a lot of variations of Stiggies, even from just Dominion. So that one right there, I believe, is the, you know, the one that has the button where you, it rams the head, followed up by the Camp Cretaceous one, original uh, uh, battle damage release. Then we have these two, which are actually Dracorexes, that being the Primal Attack and a custom Dracorex. So these guys have always been really nice. Uh, they haven't ever really standed well, as you can see here. They're barely managing to stand up, just on their tails. But they still look great, and these are such cute little species. I love them. I love having them in, in evolution in my park. These guys are just great. Super happy that Fallen Kingdom introduced us to them. Here is the Camp Cretaceous one. Objectively the best of the, the uh, Sticky Molex, just because of that paint scheme. It's just so nice and defined. 
I think it even outperforms the uh, battle damage, or I think it's dino damage. Battle damage, dino damage, extreme damage. The Walmart exclusives, that's what they really are. The Walmart exclusive, original uh, pa- uh, Sticky Moloch. I want to call them Packies. Sticky Moloch, right here. This one was my favorite for a while up until that Camp Cretaceous one came out, but this one is still amazing. Although it does have that big old gash in the side, I still really like this guy. Memory's sake, nostalgia's sake, brings me way back to 2018 just seeing this guy right here. So I can't help but love it. I love Stiggy in the movie, and I love Stiggy in real life now. Dracorex, kind of an underrated one. It was really uh, Fallen, not Fallen Kingdom, Jurassic World Evolution that really sold me on this dinosaur. He's just so small. He does his own thing. He's cute. I can't help but love Dracorex. And uh, that custom one was actually a freebie. Um, it came with another one of my orders as just a gift. So really, really happy about that one. That one I know is done by, again, Prep Prop on Instagram. Again, that one is done by Prep Prop. It's seen better days. It's kind of gotten scruffed up and scratched up. But I really don't mind that too much on dinosaur paint schemes because usually... Um, it looks just more like faded, you know, colors on the dinosaur, although it can look intrusive. But anyway, that has been our Stiggy's, Dracorexes, you know, Packy Cephalosaurs in general. A great little collection. Again, not fully complete, but these are all the ones we got. Up next, we have the Stegosaurus collection. And this one certainly is a bit more filled out than the rest of them. We certainly have gotten quite a few Stegosauruses throughout the line. And for the most part, they have been great. They have been really nice. Right up here at front, we have a custom. Obviously, this is meant to look like, of course, the Lost World Stegosaurus. This one is done by uh, Bishop Toyworks on Instagram. Bishop Toyworks, absolutely love this one. Had it for a long time, so it is a bit scuffed up and roughed up been in a ton of movies i'm sure you guys are very familiar with this guy if you've watched my movies love him to death absolutely a fantastic paint scheme next up here we have the brand new dino tracker stegosaurus there with its giant tracking gear on its side that thing looks really crazy but it makes this thing easy to identify and it's crazy color scheme with this almost arctic white with brown splotches on the back and green um, plates on the back. Very interesting. Followed up here, we have the Camp Cretaceous Stegosaurus, I believe. That being the one that comes with Darius and the Baryonyx. Kind of an interesting one. Not too hyped on the ash kind of themed color scheme, but I still can't help but love it being a part of the Stego herd. This one is much nicer with a darker brown color scheme. This is the dual attack Stegosaurus. So you have the two button gimmick on this guy. He has a really nice color scheme on this. That's mainly the differences between these guys. That and the tooling. They're either going to have one or two buttons and it's always going to be up on the plates. That's kind of just the theme with these guys. So right up here, we have the original Fallen Kingdom Stegosaurus. This was a great a first try. The colors could be better. It's kind of this greenish blue with dark green on the, on, the, on the plates. Now, while that is still nice, it could be better, but I still think it is a solid first attempt at a Stegosaurus and really set these species off on the right foot in this toy line. Right here, we have the Camp Cretaceous Stegosaurus, specifically being the Dino Escape variant. So it has that kind of, you know, mid-body articulation that is meant to break out of containment. Love that one. And up next, we have the absolutely awesome Legacy Collection set that includes the Little Junior Stegosaurus and the Mama Stegosaurus from the Lost World. Again, me being a Lost World fan, I'm all over this set. I loved it. I love getting Sarah Harding. But that Stegosaurus doesn't quite look up to par with the Lost World variant. As we know, we saw the custom up in the beginning of this uh, showcase. And it does not look like this. This one has way too much brown and not enough green. So it, the baby looks really good. I really shouldn't think they should have gone more for the baby look for the adult. With more green, less brown. But it's still a beautiful Stegosaurus. And these guys all just look great together. They make such an interesting looking horde. 
Um, and I just really enjoy this species. And I think Mattel has, for the most part, done them justice. Certainly not as bad as the Triceratopses they've done. And uh, yeah, I just can't help but love them. Now up next, we have the Dilophosauruses. This little unappreciated dinosaur certainly has not been unappreciated by this Mattel toy line. We have right there beginning off with the Amber Collection, which I still think is objectively the best. Right up here, we have the Purple Savage Strike Dilophosaurus. Not too impressed. Then we have the really nice Hammond Collection, easily the second best in this uh, entire you know collection of Dilophosaurus. Then we have this terrible one. I don't even want to look who up that is. Then we have these two. That first one right there is from the original Legacy Collection multi-pack. A great first attempt at Dilophosaurus. I was never too big of a fan of these hinged frills. They look awkward from certain angles. Um, I'm not too sure what the second one right there is, but I know that last one is the Dominion Dilophosaurus that comes with, of course, Claire Deering. And that completes the Dilophosaurus collection. I believe that one right there is the worst out of all of them. And up next, we have more assorted carnivores, starting us off with Allosauruses and starting us off with the best of the Allosauruses, the battle-damaged Allosaurus from, I believe, 2023, followed up by the Battle at Big Rock Allosaurus. Kind of a nice improvement. And then we have our first initial Fallen Kingdom Allosaurus. This one's actually pretty bad. Not a big fan of it at all. So the Battle at Big Rock was definitely a welcomed addition. Then we have Concave Venator. Certainly an interesting species to get into this line. We have the Primal Attack, the original, um, I believe, uh, I believe actually the original one is the Primal Attack. I'm not too sure about the second one. And of course we have Hammond Collection. Then we have the green dinosaur right here, which is, we have the Cytotyrannus. Pretty cool looking sculpt, followed up by the Mega Raptor and the Seatz Mecorium. Definitely interesting additions into this line. But that is just a quick overview of this group of carnivores. Definitely a great group to have. Moving on, we have more assorted herbivores. Starting us off with a beautiful custom Edmontosaurus. And of course, the Dominion Therizinosaurus. Fun fact, that wasn't actually going to be our first Therizinosaurus. There was going to be, I believe, a dual attack one. But it was canceled for the uh, Dominion one to be more significant. Then we have the Kentrosaurus. Followed up by, we have the Miragira from the Dominion line. And then we have the Primal Attack Calavosaurus right next to it. Kind of looks like a tiny little Iguanodon. I've always been fond of that guy. Followed up, we have the first of our Amargosauruses and our only Amargosaurus. Definitely a really cool looking dinosaur. Right next to him is the Ampelosaurus. One we didn't get to review. Then we have the very nice Edmontosaurus and Mosasaurus. Two cute little dinosaurs. Definitely nice to have the Edmontosaurus. It's criminally undersized, but that's kind of a pattern here with Mattel. Anyway, these guys are definitely nice. Super stoked about that. There's an Osaurus. And let's move on to more assorted carnivores with Tyrannosaurids. So these are relatives of T-Rex. Starting us off with our original Tarbosaurus that looks amazing with a custom done by Prep Prop. That is Abaddon. I'm sure you guys remember him. Then we have these Albertosauruses. This one is based off of the Operation Genesis. That one's done by uh, Bishop Toyworks. Then we have our original Albertosaurus, followed up by the, I believe, Primal Attack variation of the Al uh, Albertosaurus. So these have been our Tyrannosaurids. Definitely a nice collection to have, and I can't wait for Despletosaurus. Or really any more. You Tyrannus, there's so many great ones to add. I love Tyrannosaurids. Now, up next, we have more assorted carnivores. And starting us off right there, right there we have Aliaramus and our Protoceratosaurus, followed up by our two Herrerasauruses. Not sure what exactly release those two are, but they are two of the older variations of Herrerasaurus. Definitely we will be getting an upgrade. And right next to those two is the Monokius and the Myzakiosaurus. I believe that is the original green release. Up front, we have three of the Monolophosauruses. I, I don't know the exact release of each of these. I do believe the one on the way in there is Camp Cretaceous. And we have our new dinosaurs right up front. Then we have the Austroraptor. And right next to that is Muros Intrepidus. Those are two new ones. Then we have the older guys like Coelophysis, 
and Trudon right next to that. Of course, based off the Telltale game. Then we have our new and improved Herrerasaurus, Dimetrodon, Geniodectes, Postosuchus, and Alaphosaurus. All right, and up next we have the Ceratosauruses. And this is a, certainly a nice collection to have because Ceratosaurus has been kind of a neglected toy for most of the Jurassic toy line. And starting us off, these first two Ceratosauruses right here are actually both from Camp Cretaceous. I believe this one was the single carded release where you got the uh, action gimmick, or actually no, I think this one right here is the one that came in the box with Blue and Delta, I believe so. And then this one right here is the single carded release of the uh, Camp Cretaceous era Ceratosaurus. These both have wonderful paint schemes on them. They both look really good. I'm very actually impressed with them both. They both look like huge improvements over the original Ceratosaurus we got. And you'll go ahead and see that in a moment. But first, let's just take a quick night. Coming up next here, we have the original Fallen Kingdom release of the Ceratosaurus. And while this was a certainly a great first try, it is a little bare bones paint wise. Still, I think it gets the overall idea of the Jurassic Park 3 Ceratosaurus down. Certainly better than Hasbro. And for the time, we all adored it. And I still think it holds up relatively well. It looks good but it doesn't hold a candle to what's coming up next. And that is, of course, our brand new Hammond Collection Ceratosaurus. Of course, it's always going to be nigh impossible to beat these Hammond Collections, and that is certainly the case here with this easily being our best Ceratosaurus yet. The articulation is on point, the sculpt is on point, and the paint is on point. This is unmistakably the Ceratosaurus from Jurassic Park 3, and it looks amazing. Just a wonderful cap off for this very underrated species. I think this species is honestly complete now. We just need more repaints of the Hammond collection. But that has been the Ceratosaurus. Hopefully we'll get another kind of gimmicky release in the future. That's kind of part of the main line where it has more of a puppeteering gimmick. I don't know. There's still a lot to be done with Ceratosaurus, I think. And they could still have a lot more good ideas but it's hard to beat Hammond Collection. Coming up next, we have more assorted raptors. These two are Pyra Raptors. These are the two from Dominion. One is from the uh, base set and one is on its own. Then we have all of the uh, Atrociraptors. That being the one that comes with the tracker car, the ghost that comes with the little uh, catch pod. Then you have that random one right there that came on its own for Dominion. And then you have the other raptor that also came with the multi-pack the Chase in Malta, I believe. Uh, the orange one I did way at the end. So you did get a very nice assortment of these uh, Trociraptors. And finally, we have finally got on to Spinosaurus. The one I know everyone was waiting for aside from T-Rex. Spinosaurus here, starting us off with the amazing uh, Camp Cretaceous version. I think this is the best of the retail release Spinosauruses. Its paint scheme is second to none. But of course, you can't beat a good custom paint scheme like this amazing Jurassic Park 3 custom Spinosaurus done by Bishop Toyworks. Then for print prop, we actually have this amazing and beautiful rendition of the Jurassic Park 3 Riakatak Jungle Spinosaurus. An incredibly hard to get toy. So I just said, screw it. Let's make a custom of an objectively better Spinosaurus toy. And capping it off is the less than stellar Battle Damage Spinosaurus. Its colors really don't do it for me, and that giant flap on the side is really unsightly. But overall, I think Mattel has done the Spinosaurus fairly good justice. Just can't wait for that Hammond collection. Up next, whoa-oh, we already took a look at these two. Again, these are kind of set up weird. Uh, I didn't set up all of these myself, but these are the two we're going to focus on, that being the original Majungasaurus and the original Metriocanthosaurus from Fallen Kingdom. And that finally leads us into our Ankylosaurids and Ankylosaurus itself. Starting us off with the original Fallen Kingdom release of Ankylosaurus, followed up by, I believe, the Primal Attack uh, uh, Ankylosaurus, then unmistakably that is Bumpy. These are all the same figure, pretty much. Probably different gimmicks on the back. And this one is definitely new, that being the unmistakable Hammond Collection. Easily the best biggest ankylosaurus we've gotten 
And here are the main Ankara sources that at least I have. There are more released, but those are the ones I have. And here we have the more Ankylosaurid. We have our two Sora Paletta releases right there, and a really nice green and original uh, red one. Followed by the two Minmies we have, again, a orange one, and again, a red one. So that makes it up for our Ankylosaurids. Now, we're taking a look at the Unreal, the hybrids. First up, we got the original release of the Indominus Rex. This is a perfect toy for this figure, but I had to get it repainted to look like the jungle uh, paint scheme from Jurassic World Evolution. So that is that done by a very talented Bishop Toy Works, followed up by, of course, Ares, our custom in, uh, Indoraptor. But of course, we got to talk about the original superposable Indoraptor first, released for the Dominion line. There's Ares, of course, for the Rise of Hybrid series. Then we have the Grab and Growl Indoraptor. This one's kind of a letdown compared to the superposable, but better in sculpt, followed up by the even better in sculpt track, uh, Dino Tracker's uh, Indoraptor. Now, that is the worst Toy Rise toy wise of the three has really no articulation then we have the scorpius rexes from camp cretaceous both of those are the uh different versions that you saw on the show i obviously prefer the smaller green one because it has more articulation but the other one is nice for its clawing gimmick so this has been all of the uh, hybrid dinosaurs in this collection honestly i gotta say the indominus is the one hit wonder but that indoraptor is still great all right, and finally, we're on to T-Rex. And we have a massive Tyrannosaurus collection, so this is going to be done in two parts. And we're going to start off with the infamous Thrash and Throw from Fallen Kingdom. This is a solid Tyrannosaurus toy with an excellent gimmick. And as you can see, we liked it quite a bit, getting two different bowl customs done with this specific toy. The first one is done by uh, Bishop Toy Works, and that next one is done by Prep Prop. Then, of course, we have the infamous... Uh, extreme chomping now mine doesn't actually have a tail but we got this figure in a ton of different repaints that being pretty much every toy line we've gotten like sub-series we've gotten for jurassic world there's been an extreme chomping in there we got battle damaged camp cretaceous right there at the end we have the legacy collection bull then we actually have two customs based off of the uh, young tyrannosaurus from jurassic park 3 and rexy all done in the extreme chomping again a very fruitful uh, mold that they used a ton. I don't even have clothes to all of them here. But here's just an overview of part one of Rex's. We already have a ton. And moving on to part two, there's even more to be had. Starting off with the Camp Cretaceous Epic Roarin' T-Rex. Arguably one of the best, if not the best, mainline T-Rex in my opinion. And I got quite a few repaints of it. One from Prep Prop. One from uh, Bishop Toy Works. Actually, two from Bishop Toy Works. No, one from Bishop Toy Works and one from uh, Brett Buckley on Instagram. So this one right here, the bull is of Bishop Toy Works. This is our iconic bull we use all the time. My favorite bull T-Rex in my collection. Then this Rexy right here is done by Brett Buckley. My only piece by him, I believe. And a shame because he's a really talented artist. Then we have right here this giant Rex. This is the Here we have this Stomp and Escape from Camp Cretaceous. Pretty okay T-Rex. Then we have the really nice Dominion version of Rexy. Really nice sculpting here with that big boxy head. Absolutely love this one. We have the little baby from the Legacy Collection set right there. I don't know why it wasn't with the mail, but there is the little baby Rex we got from the Legacy Collection line. I don't have the Amber Collection version, sadly, but we do have the Magnum Opus, the best Rex in the collection, the Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now, this one was definitely a home run for Mattel. It is a wonderful, beautiful looking figure. It has some structural and engineering issues, but looks wise, it is perfect. And that is the end of our Rex overview. There may be one or two hiding somewhere in the house, but this is about 99% of our T-Rexes. Again, we didn't buy all of them because there's just so many, but these are the ones we got. Up next is a little lackluster. We have the Gallimimuses. Now, I don't have my Hammond Collection one on hand. I couldn't find it for the life of me. But there's really not too much going on. We have the original Legacy Collection right here. Uh, this one, I think, is the best non-Hammond Collection of the Gallimimuses. Then we have these two attack packs. That colorful one right there being the brand new. Uh, actually, no, that is not the brand new Gallimimus. My bad. That is actually the 
Legacy Collection Multi-Pack Gallimimus right next to the original Fallen Kingdom Attack Pack Gallimimus. They don't really stand a chance to this Legacy Collection one. And the green one way on the end over here is for the uh, Camp Cretaceous toy line. So, pretty interesting. Next up, I didn't have anywhere else to put these, but these are our Amber Collection dinosaurs. I do count uh, Hermes right there, the yellow one, as a Utah Raptor, so technically it is in scale. And switching up the scenery here, we are in the garage to take a look at our long necks. Here we have the Dreadnoughtosaurus. Uh, this one is absolutely massive, as you can see, just towering over everything. Then we have, the, of course, the classic Legacy Collection Brachiosaurus right there in all of its glory. And, well, there's the Super Colossal Blue. We didn't have anywhere to put that either, so I just thought I'd show it off since it's here and there. Uh, we have our beautiful custom Brachiosaurus. This is actually based off of the Reoc Attack toy from Jurassic Park 3. Really happy with how that came out. Another Brachy. Then, of course, we have the Apatosaurus from the Legacy Collection line. A beautiful figure. Absolutely happy we got that, and I can't wait for the Mementiosaurus. And, of course, right there at the end, you have the Super Colossal T-Rex. The only other one of the Super Colossals I've ever bought. Just not a big fan of those giant ones, but there's the Rex. And finally, to finish off this video, we have the Giganotosaurus. I didn't know where to put this guy. There's no real category he fits into. And, well, I just want to poop on him a little more. I really hate this figure. It is terrible. The Giganotosaurus looks so cool in Dominion. It really deserved a great figure, and Mattel really did not deliver. But since it's here, here it is. The ultimate threat. Our own custom Ultimasaurus. It wasn't put in the hybrid section, but that's because it was saved for the end of the video as a special bonus. That is our custom Ultimasaurus done by none other than Bishop Toy Works. An absolute demon of the collection. Anyway, guys, that's it for this massive overview over our entire Jurassic World dinosaur collection. We will do a separate video all about the vehicles, humans, and other things, but this is just for the dinosaurs. Uh, this was a huge task to uh, overtake, so if you guys did like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. It'd mean the world to me. I am really trying, you know, to, in to introduce more interesting content that's not just constantly reviews or toy movie, reviews or toy movie, you know what I mean? So I do want to bring you guys a little bit more interesting other Jurassic related content. So if you guys like this video and want to see more in similar vein, definitely let me know. Like, share and subscribe. And guys, this has been Toy Adventures signing out. Peace.